Welcome to The Good Life. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Patrick Harney. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, hit the notification button so you can get a notification when new episodes come out. And uh, make sure to check this out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Um, if you are listening to this, then you can also watch this on YouTube. Um, a couple announcements before I, or just one announcement before I get into my guest here on who's going to be on the show. Uh, this is episode 25, which means I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break after I release this episode or when this episode comes out. Um, it's summertime, you know, and I'd like to, uh, like to enjoy the summertime. I got stuff to do this summer and, and also, I mean, you know, 25 episodes, that's a grind. Yeah. That's like six months straight every single week having an episode come out and I love it. I'm not saying I don't love it, but your boy needs a break a little bit. So every 25 episodes, I'm going to take a break and yeah, here we are. So I'm very excited to have this guest with me today. Uh, it's a, a buddy of mine that I've known for years and years and years. Uh, his He's a rapper. He goes by the name of Quaj. He has a new album that's out today. Today. And I'm lucky enough to be able to have a conversation with him about it and to be able to talk about that album that uh, it's called Lost Art for Collectors, and it's a good one. It is out now. All the links are down below to, to be able to listen to it and to be able to follow uh, Mike, my buddy's name, to be able to follow him and everything that he's got going. So, yeah, let's get into the episode. All right, and we're off. Mike, dude, your album is out. Yep. How does that feel, man? Dude, it feels tight, man. Uh, a long time in the making. Did a lot of hard work, and I'm ready for the show that I have in two days in Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, it's going to be dope. Yes. So the album is called Lost Art Collectors. Or Lost, Lost Art for Collectors. Lost Art for Collectors. Yeah. Now... Lost Art for Collectors, what did you think of or how did you come up with the inspiration for that name of the album? That was a weird way to ask that question, but... No, I got you. What was the inspiration for the name? So basically, I feel like the way I rap is, is dead. It's a lost art, hence the lost art. And then for collectors, anybody who's a fan of this particular piece of you know, art style, this, this project is for you. So that, that, that explains the whole thing, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's very true because you have a very, what would be considered now old school yeah. feel, old school vibe to, to the way that you, uh, that you perform, the way that you rap and, um, and your music. I mean, you can tell there's a lot of like, there's a lot of soul, there's a lot of funk in it also. And um, yeah, man, I love it. Um, so what's the, what's the story that you're trying to tell with, this album because i know everybody you know there's there's always a story that you're trying to uh get across as an artist so so what would be that story for this album that's kind of funny because there's thematic albums that have one theme just like you're saying mm -hmm. i haven't really reached that point yet I've, each track is an individual story and i'm talking about something different mm. um so there's this doesn't really have a theme ex besides the skill that i'm trying to show I like, you know, I'm a wordplay guy. I like the rhyme schemes, techniques. Uh, first and foremost, that's that's what I'm trying to get across. Okay. And listen to every track and kind of get something different, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, um, it, it's almost like it's almost like an art collection. Yeah. You know, Actually. where where each each song is a different painting. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. And also you touched on just at the very beginning, I was going to talk about this at the end, but might as well bring it back up. So on what would be the 25th of June, this yeah. Friday, you're yeah. going to be in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, performing at the Baker house. Dude. Yes. You said your friend, Sunny days invited you out. Yeah. So like, you already got a show. You already got a show for your album two days after 
Come on, man. Hey, the world the world works in mysterious ways. The law of attraction, you know. Yeah. Thinking it will become, but so yeah. I'm that's sure you sweet. know you know that. Oh yeah, 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 dude. That's cool, man. Um, so so what what uh, how important is it to you? Because you did talk about this a little bit. How important is it to you to keep that old school feel alive? Because um, I mean, like personally, a lot of like for me, a lot of rap nowadays, there's nothing, there's not much to it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's not much, uh, it doesn't feel like heart going that goes into it, but, but that's how all the old school was. And that's how, that's how your stuff is. So talk about that. How, How important is that for you to keep that alive? Keep that going. It's super important, bro. Like I'm, I'm a student of the game. I may not seem like it, but I know a lot about the '90s and the the culture that they that they uh, kind of flexed upon, which is writing your own rhymes. You know, being able to spit rhymes off of the top, freestyle, and not having it written down. Being ready to go at any time at a party, at a you know wherever. Like that whole like vibe is super important to me. It's, you see it in my my art style and the graffiti, uh, the cassette tape on my album cover, like everything from the way I dress, like all super important. And I couldn't even do it any other way. I've tried to write differently on like uh, more modern beats. I can't even do it. I just can't. Like <laughs> so, like yeah, it's just it's ingrained to in me for real. So yeah, well, and cool. and I feel like and I, okay, and every, everybody knows I am not a rapper, but. <laughs> but I do appreciate music. I grew up in music and yeah. what, so when you say like, you can't write to a lot of modern beats, I feel like for like a true artist. Yeah. That would be very difficult because yeah. there's nothing really to it. No, I'm not saying the writing I'm saying like the modern day beats, like there's not really much there yeah. to work with. And uh, if I could inform the fans that Patrick is an amazing singer Oh jeez! Have a song together. People will love it. Uh, Stop we, it, man! Stop it! <laughs> like, really, keep coming. Keep say, say more. <laughs> Just kidding. we recorded that song. I didn't even know Patrick sang until like I was in there and like watching him record. Like, amazing. That was Crazy. fun, dude. That was how many years ago? Talk like seven, ten. I don't no. know. <laughs> no. No. About five or four. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And I remember, I remember you sent me the beat to it. And I thought it was so cool. And I was like, dude, yeah. I have to, I have to write something to this. And I, and I distinctly remember this. It was 1.45 in the morning when you sent it to me. And I had the whole chorus written by 2 a.m. <laughs> legendary, legendary. Bro. And I, and I was like, yo, I said, I, I have to, I, so I, the next day I recorded it and I sent it over to you and you're like, what? Done deal. And, and I remember you saying like, how did you do this so fast? I said, because this beat is sick. Like, <laughs> like, and then I heard, and then I heard your, uh, verses on it and i and yeah that that blew me away that was really yeah, cool. this day, i love collabing with my friends like that's a we'll have that forever you know yeah, so, yeah. exactly well hey man if you ever need another voice i got you <laughs> um <laughs> so so what are what are some of your because i'm interested here like i know that some artists can some artists make like 40 songs and then narrow it down to 10 i know you you have 11 on your album um or some artists will do only the the amount that they want on the album how do you how do you work how do you um how do you create how do you write do you do you go with the the large volume and then cut it down from there or do you just go right for whatever feels right yep you said it i go for whatever feels right i had about 14 when it was all said and done i cut three off uh but yeah, I'm not a large volume guy. I know guys who can write tracks. They pump out like 20 tracks a week. I'm more Ooh. of a quality over quantity. My inspiration comes and goes like all the time. I'd be lucky to, uh, that's why it took so long, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you can't rush perfection, right? That's what I like to think, but some people would think differently. I know guys who are sitting on 100 tracks. Okay, but like they're all average. <laughs> yeah yeah well and honestly it hasn't i don't i feel like it hasn't really been that long i mean 2019 was the last yeah. last project you put out i mean that's only two years not even two years but if you think about it if you want to be relevant two years is a lifetime like 
people drop drop uh, projects quarterly to stay relevant like um, yeah but you know what though the longevity of those projects that's what i like to say <laughs> but like yo but like <laughs> but some people have it both like russ you know russ yeah uh that that dude dropped the track a week for i think a year straight and they were all bangers so like if you have the quality and the quantity you're better off than a guy like me who puts something out every two years so yeah but but typically too i mean you got to think um and and correct me if i'm wrong in if uh if your side of the industry is a little different than this but like i know with a lot of bands like they they'll put out an album and then they have the touring cycle like a whole album cycle is like two years that's true so, i mean it, i mean am, am i wrong in assuming that it's the same way with no you're not you're not wrong but where it's difficult is i i'm not at the level where i can book a national tour um so I gotta I gotta do my local gigs, maybe my Midwest gigs. Yeah. So I don't I can't rely on my album to feed feed uh, people's attention for a year or two. I got it because I don't. Mm. I, yeah, not yet. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of totally random, but uh, did you see Logic's coming back? I I did. Which I know I've, I know everybody was like, oh yeah, of course he is. But like, dude, at least wait out in a couple more years, you know. Bro, like, I feel like he. Just, I feel like he just retired. <laughs> he did though. Like he, this year, he came back like ten days later with a track. Yeah, what it felt like. Yeah, but I don't know. speaking to you, man. So like, you've been doing a lot. This podcasting, acting, uh, writing scripts, directing. At last time we talked to you, were in the middle of a uh, fundraising for one of your big movies. Did that yeah. come? So that um, we are currently in talks with um, a broker that is helping us get our funding um, and speaking with a potential investor now. So yeah, dude, there's so many pieces that go into that. There's so many variables that have to fall into place. Like I, like it's one of those things where like, I, I wish like you and your team could just do everything and don't have to rely on every on so many different people because then i mean this movie would have been made already you know what i mean would have been made but you know but that's not how it is and there's a lot of gatekeepers you got to get through and a lot of uh a lot of bs that you that is just uh, it's unreal the, when when it when it gets to the point where like there's absolutely there's nothing more you can do right. until you get an answer from so and so that's really frustrating <laughs> <laughs> bro and especially with the type of money that's involved right you know because it's not like it's not you know it's not chump change i mean in terms of the film industry it's a lower budget film but it's that's still a lot of money man like what's that the dollars yeah yeah exactly so it's yeah dude it's it gets tough but um so do you feel like because i feel like this that people don't take you seriously because you don't have the work that really is popular or speaks for itself like because if you were leonardo like they'd be like all right bet sign yeah yeah so, no i i would definitely yeah i would say that um there's nothing more than i hate or there, there's nothing more that i hate than these two questions that i get asked <laughs> one have i seen you in anything oh my god well yeah. i don't know what you've seen right so i don't know be like, yeah. What, why don't you email me your whole filmography of everything that you've watched? And maybe I can say that I've been in one of them. Yeah, that's a terrible question. <laughs> you know, and then the other one is, uh, what is, is, is what's your plan B? Ooh. I mean, that's, that's a terrible question too. Right? Like, you, why, would you, why would you ask that? Luckily, um, I've, gotten that, I've gotten asked that enough and been able to respond pretty uh pretty not fiercely but in a way that nobody asked me that anymore <laughs> what do you say, bro? um you know because to me like i think if you have a plan b then you're accepting the potential that your plan a could fail and exactly that's right yeah and that's not at all gonna happen you know what i mean exactly man because the second you think oh well i need a plan b 
you've already failed your plan a i know so you really just got to be like i don't have one simple as that yeah i don't this is it um yeah and i would imagine it's the same for you i mean what you know where where do you want to I'm not going to ask you the whole, like, where do you see yourself in five years question, but, but like, what, where do you, where do you, what's the next step that you would like to reach in your career? Do you think? Okay. I'll answer. And then I'll ask you next too, but to- definitely a Midwest tour or maybe a multi-city tour. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe some big Spotify placements, you know, really get my name out there. Nice man. man. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. That'd be really good for you. What are you shooting for, man? I want to be able. My what I'm shooting for is to be able to uh, make enough projects that I can support myself fully mm. on those projects. I forgot about that too. You know That's... what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I like I I want to be able to make sure that I'm that all of my bills are paid. Yep you know, with my acting. Um, and, and I mean, if I, you know, if we can get this film off the ground, then I will be, then we'll be there. Yeah. So when it's, so it's, so it's that thing where it's like, when you're so close, you know what I mean? When you're so close, but it just take it's taking more time than you want, you know? Yeah. But everything happens in the time that it should, you know, exactly. everything good takes time, man. Yep. That's true. And if it was, if it was easy then everybody would do it super facts right yep um so what are going back to the album what are some of your favorite songs on the album like the ones that that you're like oh i can't wait to perform this one or oh this one just hits different than all all the rest yeah uh the fantasy uh which is a song featuring evan meyer oh that's so, um, so good great singer Apparently, no one knew he could sing until he was drunk at a party and was like, just singing drunk. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to be famous or anything, but we think he sounds like Justin Timberlake. Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Love that song. Another song called Woke on there. I shot a music video for it. It's kind of dope. That's the first song on the album. Yep. I touch on some topics close to home, like my dad and him not. No, he wasn't absent, but like he left early. And, uh, something i never really talked about but we're not really that close so i touched on that so every time i hear it i'm like wow that's you know i like i like uh letting some some people see some closer things yeah uh, but yeah i mean they all hold a special place in my heart all those songs oh what a cop-out answer <laughs> they all hold it oh i love every single one of them no, equally. no you that's don't. true to be honest yo, I, i'm like i would cut that shit right in half this half of it is like eh. <laughs> man that's your made, album you have to you have to support all of it what are you talking about <laughs> yeah. i only made it 11 songs to give the people like a little substance but if it was up to me it would have been like five 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 songs oh that's funny no i no i dude honestly i think i think kind of going back to uh woke and, and talking about your dad a little bit you know that's the that's those types of things are what separate um, in my opinion, is what separate artists that have or that will have longevity in their careers and artists who will just fade away after a few years. Because, you know, when you can start talking about things that a lot of people can relate to or even just one person can relate to, rather than like the whole just every single song is just about partying and having fun, you know, I'm the man, blah, blah, blah. No, like when you start talking about stuff that's like that hits close to home for you, you have no idea how many other people that hits hold, that hits close to home too. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like everyone parties, man. That's not anything special. Yeah. Uh, and to actually piggyback on that point, I don't even have to relate to it. Some of my favorite music is stuff that I haven't been through, but they was told in such an authentic way that I was like, wow, hmm. that, that's just an amazing perspective on life or ama- an amazing story. Like, yeah. I just want to hear authenticity and uh yeah so yeah because sure. there's it's always funny when you hear when you hear of about when you hear the stories about uh people who are like rapping about doing this that and the other whatever and then later on they're asked like so do you actually do all these things and they're like oh no 
no. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know? Um, it couldn't be me. But... Yeah. And, and that is one thing I will say. You are one of the most authentic people that I know. Yo, right back at you, bro. And Let's I mean, have a little bro moment here. <laughs> oh, man. Stop it. <laughs> no, but but honestly, though, I, I mean it. I mean, every every single time that we have a conversation or anytime we play basketball or whatever, like you are you and that's it. Like you're not putting on a show for anybody. You're not you know, you can get along with anybody. And. Yeah, man, it's it's always a good time, you know, hanging out with you and um, and, you know, and 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 beating you in basketball. You know, it is. It's always a good time. You know, I mean. <laughs> Having to put having to put you and, and Chris, you know, in, in a body bag on the court. I mean, it's it is what it is. You know, I'm sorry, I'll, but I'll definitely call Chris right now. Right now, I don't think you want that, but oh man, well, you know, actually, well, you know, you know what's funny is, uh, you know, for all of you who don't know, years and years and years and years ago, we were on the same basketball team. Mm-hmm. And we only got to play one game together, one actual game together. Um, but I remember, like, I had so much fun. Mm. Um, yeah, that like team. Jordan and Scotty Pippen out there, man. Like Exactly. You know, like, I was the mic to your Scotty. And so. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can both laugh at that because it's so ridiculous. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous to think that, you know. Going passes like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude, it's a good time. Um, but, I, yeah, I will say uh, Fantasy and Cuban Links. Those are my two, my two favorites right now. Um, because, uh, well, and, and, and I, you know, like I told you before we got started is, I always like to digest the album a few times and I was lucky enough to be able to get the album early. Thank you, sir. Um, and yeah. And so I listened to it a few times and, um, and I'm still, I'm still digesting everything that you're talking about in the album, but it is so good, man. That's what's up, man. Uh, it really is. And, um, and there's a lot of people that collabed on, on this. So you've got, uh, I'm 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 looking at the track list right now. You have Knowledge the Kid. You have uh, Swish. Yep, Swish. Right, Swish. Evan Meyer. You got Chin, Will's Piff, um, and Oops. Uh, most importantly, <laughs> or not most important, but Novelist uh, from Detroit. Yep. Part of a pretty famous rap group called Clear Soul Forces. So that was one of my favorite features. Yeah. Yep. So how did you, and then you also got Morgan Mowinski, Clarissa yes. Fay, Buddha. Lots. Goosebumps. Lots. Yeah, man. Yep. You got features on features on features on this album. And it's really cool. Cause like, I always love hearing an album that's so collaborative, that there's so many different people involved in the creativity of it all. That's exactly. always really cool to me. Like, like it, like I know how some people say, you know, oh well, no. If you need so and so to sell your music, then, and, like, but no, because to me, like if I'm looking at an album and there's not a single feature, or whatever, like I get kind of bored. Yeah, man. You know, that's a great point. Yeah. What? Well, come on, man. I'm I'm the same way. Um, they make the song better. In fact, I want I I like I pick features that do better than me to make the song better. Some people are afraid of like getting bodied on their own track. I'm not me. Like, I know I did the best I could, so I want somebody to do even better. Yeah. So, and yeah, it's just fun. And also, yeah. dude, I don't. I to be like per perfectly honest, I don't think I couldn't see you getting getting bodied on any, any of your tracks. Not 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 because like you're so good. Right. I <laughs> um, mean, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Uh, no, no, but, but because your style is so much different it's so unique to what is out there now that's true you know which is crazy to think about because that was it back in the day you know was it? and so to, to so to call that unique now it's kind of sad but crazy. um very sad but hey man that lane you know needs to be filled or that's a that's a, a spot that needs to be filled right now and you're it man 
Hey, appreciate you, man. Bring so, stuff back. It, that same analogy, or could you make the analogy in the acting game? So, like, I'm using a style that's outdated. Mm-hmm. What about you? Like, can someone come with an acting style that is, like, old? Or is, is that not how it works? Uh, they can come with a technique in terms of how they work um, that could be considered... Uh, a technique that's not used as much anymore, but Such that's, as. like old, um, it, like if you ever watch movies in what is referred to as the golden age of Hollywood back in, you know, uh, when everything was extra dramatic back in like the fifties and sixties and forties and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and you hear the guys talking like this, see, and like, <laughs> it, you know, it, like if I were to try to do that now, I'd get laughed off the set. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and yeah, but, but the, I think what's different in terms of the music and, and acting is it's the, the music is that like the style is um, very, di- that would be the equivalent almost to like the preparation that an actor goes through ah yes 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 yes. because you know i may try to be method and say i like get in a fight or whatever and i like actually cut my face yeah yeah yeah. when you're watching the movie you don't know whether that's a prosthetic or if i actually cut my face yeah 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 you know what i mean unless you find out later but in the preparation of it that's kind of where that those differences lie that's pretty cool yeah where do you stand I, I will never cut my face for a film. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I'm I'm not the guy who like stays in character the right. whole filming of the movie yeah, yeah, like, yeah. off camera. The second they yell cut, I'm out of my character. And I think that's you've heard you've heard otherwise. Do you judge people who like take it home and like let it affect them outside after the movie's done, like a month later. Like, no, no, no. I, I, don't, I, I never judge anybody based on or you know with their work um, yeah. creatively, just because everybody's experience is so much different. And for for me, like if I'm in a film with somebody, and I know my co-star is really, um, like they're really keeping their character with them for a long time. If that means that they perform at their very best for the film yeah. and do what you got to do. That's true. Do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And if, and if it's somebody who can like freaking nail it in, you know, in between action and cut and then at craft services, they're like, Oh, Hey, you know, what's up, man? Like having a good time. And they're completely different from their character. Then fine. As long as they're nailing it on camera, then fine. As long as they're prepared and they did the work. Now, if somebody comes and they don't know their lines, they don't know the story or they don't know their character well and they're goofing around having a good time, then yeah, I have a problem with that because then that's a, that's affecting my job. Tom, Tom Cruise problem. Like when he went off on uh, the people for co- violating the COVID violence. Oh my goodness, dude. That was oh. honestly like a lot of people were upset by that. Um, I wasn't upset by that because the, the full context of that story was that he had sent everybody offset and kept only those people. So he wasn't yelling at those people in front of everyone. And also um, he had told them, he had warned them like nicely multiple times beforehand and they still weren't. But also that movie is, was so expensive to make and they still had to shut it down. Yo, ah, like later on, um, they still well, shut it down later on for a positive COVID test. <laughs> which, which is exactly what he was trying to avoid, but yep. And, and with him being a producer on it, he assumes a lot more responsibility than just being an actor on it. Right. He's got a personal stake in it. Like, yep. And so, yeah. so yeah. there's a lot of money on the line. But his thing, too, was like, you know, I don't want to have to send 300 some people home saying, sorry, you're fired because these idiots won't like like that was the that was one of the first films that went like first major films that went back to filming. Um, yeah post you know covid and so they had to they had to set the standard basically so yeah i didn't get excited or i mean i I didn't get upset by that i thought i was like dude honestly completely valid i don't think anybody should have recorded it that was kind of (laughs) 
stupid, you know? Um, Cause they were getting their shit shoot out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> getting yeah. tore a new one. Getting torn up. Sheesh, man. Jeez. Um, so I got to ask, is there any other at the moment, because I know things are, you know, are still trying to come back for the music industry here for like live shows, but um, are there any other tour or any other show dates lined up so far for this year? Nah, dude, they kind of, they kind of come and go. Like, yeah. They're mostly like my friends. Ooh, Ooh, that was loud. 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 Um, oh yeah, let me turn that down, bro. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just people I've I've met online. This is how it always happens. I I've known them for like five years on SoundCloud. They get in a position to where they're hosting shows or have a venue. They hit me up, and then I meet them for the first time at the show, uh, and then the rest is history. That's how I get like all my shows, like ten or twelve of them that I've done. So that's cool. Yeah. So. Who knows when the next one will be? Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that I always ask everybody that comes on is, because um, I do think it's important. I think it's important to try and, uh, you know, get each guest that I have their, their input or the way that they do things, because maybe somebody listening is struggling and they might be able to, you know, benefit from it. Um, how do you keep a positive mindset day to day? You know, like, how do you keep yourself positive? Man, I won't even lie to anyone. It's it's tough. I actually, I, sometimes I don't. Um, I get positive days whenever I get, like, positive feedback. Like, I, I kind of work big on validation, mm. almost. Um, but that's what keeps me striving is, like, when I, whenever I get somebody telling me, like, yo, I love this song, I'll, I, that makes my week. So I just continue to feed upon <clears throat> the fruits of my labor. So I work hard, get a positive validation, and it's just like a cycle. But yeah, it's kind of not the best answer, but no, no, dude, that, that that is a good answer. Because I mean, if it'd be, I think anybody would be lying if they said, you know, oh, well, I'm pretty positive all the time, you know, and I like to because everybody's got stuff they're dealing with, you know, I'm about to say like, like I feel like some people would have like give some crazy positive answer, but like a lot of the days I'm just mad that I'm not famous yet. Like, <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, yo, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping stones, man. It's a mountain. Yeah, yeah it so. is. It's a mountain, man. You gotta, and you'll get there one day, you know. And and that's the thing is you <clears throat> you've always strike me as the kind of guy that doesn't necessarily and correct me if i'm wrong but doesn't necessarily care so much about the fame but but cares about being able to work with the best yeah and unfortunately they go hand in hand You're yeah right i don't really care about being known but i to get the respect from the people i wanted from i need to be known so yeah it's, it's it sucks but yeah spot on you know me man <laughs> <laughs> um hopefully I'd like to think I do at least somewhat. Um, I got a lot in the closet, but yeah. <laughs> um, well, hey, man, uh, before I, I wrap up every show, I always like to get into a segment called The Goods. Um, got three questions. Ask you and uh, pick your brain a little bit and see what you got going. So shall we get to it? Let's get it cracking, man. <laughs> Question one. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of rappers? Uh, this is no particular order. Okay. First name I will say is Eminem. And the okay. distinction that needs to be made is this is everything he did that was before Encore. Uh, that that needs to be made. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, Big L, which is a rapper from Harlem, New York. He died. He was around when like Jay Z and Nas were young and doing their thing. <clears throat> um, someone I've just been getting into recently, also from New York, the letter A Z, so the first letter of the alphabet and the last letter. Uh, also from New York, hung around with Nas and them too. That's three. Um, uh, 
I would say Mick Jenkins. He's from Chicago. Does songs with Vic Mensa, Chance the Rapper, uh, and such. And then five would probably also be Vic Mensa. Another <laughs> distinction that needs to be made, though, is nothing after his mixtape that's called the Internet Tape. So this is, uh, I don't, yeah, this is everything bef before he was signed to Kanye uh, in that label. Okay. So I'm so a big fan of artists, but only for like a certain period, then they start to change up and it's like, that's, I can't do that. But so, so, so that's your top five. That's a, that's a very distinct, like, or very specific. So, so Eminem before Encore, are you, yep. so, are you, so you're not including Encore, right? I am including Encore, but nothing after. Let me, yeah. So I said, okay. That, that so, after. so Eminem, but nothing after Encore. Yeah. Yep. Uh, nice. Big L. Yep. His whole catalog. Amazing. Yep. AZ. AZ. Fire. Vic Mensa. Pre label deal. Pre label deal. Pre the internet mixtape. Are you including internet mixtape? Including nothing after. Okay. <laughs> and then your fifth one was? Mick Jenkins. Mick Jenkins, that's right. Okay, so that's your top five. Yeah. Names that wouldn't normally be put in there, I feel like. Never. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, you... not a, I'm not a big cliche dude. Okay, all right. Big, like, nah. I respect that. Yeah, they're dope, but yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, okay, if you could collaborate with any artist, alive or dead, who would it be? Uh, funny enough, the dude I'm about to say is someone I meant to put in my top 10, but, or top five, but it's too late. Uh, he's from Sacramento, California. His name is Illicism. He's an underground rapper. He wouldn't be on, he'd be on like a thousand people's top 10 in the world, but he's my favorite. He shaped my entire sound. So like, yeah. And you just casually didn't put him in your top five? Well, cause like he's... <laughs> <laughs> period of <laughs> yo he shaped my sound so long ago i forget about him he doesn't really shape my sound today so i i forgot about him like but he, he he shaped so much of it but no longer does he really influence me that much so it's easy to forget he must, he must be so good that you forgot about him <laughs> no, man, you know what i'm saying though like you yeah, had a big yeah, no. inspiration as a child and they're no longer your inspiration now yeah no, so, I get that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was that was Will Smith for me as uh when I was younger as an actor. Word? Yeah, exactly. I was a huge Will Smith fan. I mean, I still am, but huge Will Smith fan growing up. Watched everything oh, he favorite. was in. Um Ooh, and so and I tried to like even some of his comedy um or his comedic roles. <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah, yeah. Is some that you know. That's how I would kind of approach some comedic characters is the way he would approach them, yeah. um, you know. And then he kind of and then he kind of fell off for a while, you know. And and different actors started coming up or whatever. And exactly. Yeah. But hey, props to him for trying to get back in the gym. Did you see what's going on with him? I mean, that dude's been in shape since birth. Back in but, the gym. Well, but. Yeah, because so all of COVID and everything, he posted a picture and he's got a, like a gut. Oh, and shit. I mean, he's not, he's just soft and pudgy. And he literally said in his, in his um, comment, he puts, uh, I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm in the worst shape of, of, of my life. Wow. <laughs> and it became like this challenge thing. A bunch of other actors started posting pictures of them, you know, without a shirt on saying, you know, like the Will Smith challenge. And so now Will Smith's <laughs> in the gym was, and he's... And he's trying to get all shredded up again. And yeah, that, it's funny. That's powerful. But you know, um, what's that? Interrupt the goods, but I want to ask you the same questions you asked me. Uh, you could either finish the third question or we could oh, ask damn. the first two. All right. All right. Wow. Okay. I haven't ever, uh, I haven't ever had the goods asked to me. I'm giving you the goods, bro. All right. Them. All, All right. right. Well, so who is so I'm I'm assuming it would be actors. Who is my top five actors of all time, right? Mm -hmm. Oy. Okay. Um in no particular order. Never. Jack Nicholson's on there. Okay. I think Denzel is on there. I think 
I'd have to say Meryl Streep is on there. Uh, is it a sin that I don't have a picture in my head for Meryl Streep? <laughs> no, yeah, it's I'm, not a sin. Oh, that's an L. That's an L. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take the L. I mean, she has so many Oscars. It's unreal. She has so many Academy oh, yeah. It's unreal. Classic. So for male actors, then I would say uh, Denzel, Jack, Nicholson. Um, I think De Niro. Um, I would be as bold to put Leo. Why bold? What? He's a goat. He's one of the goats, bro. Who doesn't he like is, Leo? He is really good, but he's he's young still. There's still a lot for him to do. Okay. Um, and... And Marlon Brando, you got to do it. Okay, he said you got. You didn't seem too confident about that last one, bro. Well, because I, he's he's always on everybody's list. You know what I mean? But he was so good. Know. But he but he fell off so hard at the end of his career. Why well, was drugs? What happened? No, it's just like he he had a an eating problem where he he gained so much weight and mentally he just like he stopped preparing. He was having. Anytime he would go to on a project, he'd make them. He he would refuse to read the script, and he would just have them have cue cards on the side to read his lines for, so he could read them off the cue cards for him. And like, I don't know. I think he had a lot of like depression issues and stuff too. And yeah. But in his early career, he put out some fantastic performances. Shout out to Marlon um, Brando. Okay. Uh, if I wouldn't put him on there though, I'd put Tom Hanks on there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then female uh actors or actresses um meryl streep um i would put mm. Mm. <laughs> not the ones that you want to be with bro but <laughs> <laughs> like, Yo, who, the baddest? can we put jennifer aniston on there? Oh, no, i'm just kidding um no, I I would say, you know who I think is also a fantastic actress is Frances McDormand. Okay, I'll have she's, to look. She's really really good. Um, she's a little crazy, but she's really good. Um, I would say, hmm. I like her. Uh, I would put Viola Davis on there. Okay, I feel like I've I know this name. She's oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. She puts out she's still stuff. doing the shit today, man. Yeah, she is. You know who else I would put on there that I feel like a lot of people might not, but I've I've always thought that she's a phenomenal actress is Octavia Spencer. Uh I'm pulling up all these faces because I know yeah, she's good. Last thing I saw her in was the, the help. But yeah, yeah, she's dope. She's been in so many good or she's she's played so many good roles. Um, so what am I at four? And then, yeah. um, and then I also would say, Charlie Theron's damn good. Uh, don't know, but she sounds hot. Charlie, Charlie Theron. She sounds hot. Um, <laughs> Woo! I love this. I love her. Yeah. She, she's a really good actress. Really, really good actress. So yeah, so that's what I would say. Sure. Uh, um, if I could be in any film or if I could be in a film with any actor, who would it be? Matthew McConaughey. He's my favorite of all time. Um, I, love Ma I love Matthew, man. Or uh, if you're going dead, Jerry Lewis. Okay. The old comedian Jerry Lewis. Uh, he was the original Nutty Professor. Um, oh. he, uh, he's a comedic genius. He yeah. used to, he used to for like ten years straight. He would write, direct, star in, produce, and edit two movies a year. That's like, unheard of. Yeah, you don't, you can't do that nowadays. Can't do it. Um, so yeah, that's those are my answers to to the goods there. Hey. Um, and then I have one more question to ask you, and that is. What do you do to keep yourself centered and grounded? Stay humble, man. Um, yeah, just stay humble, which can work as like a double-edged sword sometimes because at, at a certain point, you got to stop being modest and, you know, really stick your chest out, but never enough to where you, you, 
you miss out on the on the the connections you can make by being too cocky or mm. miss, missing out on things you could grow upon because you think you're the best. Like I got friends and even in, in Lansing that think they're the best thing since sliced bread, but how how can that be true when you're still here? Yeah. So I will never that that keeps me centered is just being humble and uh stuff like this podcast, stuff like this. Like this is dope. I love this. So cool, man. Well yeah. great. Well, dude, I've I've loved having you on. Um hey, and hey, you gotta answer this now. Oof. Okay. Well, how do I stay centered and grounded? Um, well, I, I rely heavily on my faith. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a key center point for me. Um, and also, you know, in terms of like people around me is like my family and friends who have always called me out on my BS from when I was little, um, you know, they continue to do that. And that's important. You know, it's important to have those people in your life because if you, you know, there's nothing worse uh, at the end of the day than having those friends that just agree with everything that you say and like gas you up all the time, even if what you're doing is trash, um, you know, it's, it's not healthy. And, and I think, and you see that with a lot of successful people because everything just gets handed to them on a silver platter. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't do that to me. You know what I mean? Don't do that to me. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, those people like fall like hard and miserably, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think so that, but then also, you know, just focusing on the, the, uh, goal that I don't care if I'm, I don't care if I go down or if I don't go down as the best actor of all time, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. What I care about is being able to, I want to be able to, to work with the best who have ever done it and be able to hold my own. There you go. Like, I want to be able to say, that I went toe to toe with so-and-so and I don't know who won. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't That's matter who won. It really doesn't. Exactly. You were there. That's what I want to be able to say. Um, no. You know, and also too, like I want to, I just, I want to be, I want my legacy to be that I did the best I could with what I had and that I treated people well and I treated people with respect and, um good man good so man. yeah man i just I, that those are the things i try to focus on to help keep me and just like taking one day at a time that's a that's a big thing that i've had to learn is just taking one day at a time because if i try to you know if i try to think too far ahead then i psych myself out and i <laughs> spin out right you know what i mean yeah. um huge 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 nuggets that you just dropped yeah yeah well Great thank story. you and that and i'll tell you i learned a lot of that from my parents too. That's what a big thing and, uh, and different mentors I've had in my life, you know, as I've gone through, it's amazing how it's, it's, it's amazing. If you really look back at your life, it's amazing how people come in and out of your life right when you needed them to. And they gave you the information that you needed at the time, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how that works, but well, Hey man, tell, tell everybody, where they can find your music, where they can uh, they can purchase that shirt that you got there, on. Yeah. Right. So yeah, for sure. Uh, I got a website, freshly minted. All my merch is on there, including this shirt. Uh, Lord L O R D, and then my rap name Quaj K W A J dot com. Maybe Pat will put it in the description. Yep, the and link then- will be down below. Yep. And then all my music is everywhere. Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, YouTube, Amazon, Pandora, whatever. It's there. Um, So, yeah, just check me out and hope you dig it. Yes. And if you can, if you guys can make it, get out to that show this Friday out in Lake. And any of you in Wisconsin that are are listening or anybody that's close to Lake Geneva, and you want to go check out a good artist and a good show. Yeah, not far from Chicago. It's the Baker's yeah. house, right? Yep, the Baker house. Yep. Baker house. Okay. So yeah, well, hey man, 
thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, hey, it's it's been a blast time. talking with you, and you know, I can uh, I can definitely make sure to whoop your ass in basketball soon. Uh, hey, I'll see you next week, bro. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. Um, but yeah, man, thanks again, and and you're welcome back anytime, man. Cool. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, and that concludes the 25th episode of The Good Life. Um, Thank you to everybody who has listened and watched and subscribed and commented and shared so far. I really appreciate it. It means more to me than you know. And I promise I will be back, but I've got some things I got to do and uh, and some much needed rest and relaxation. So I'm going to be taking that and... Yeah, I will be back, and I'm excited to get a whole new slew of guests to come on and new stuff to talk about, and it'll be a good time. So, thank you. I'll see you around.